Which is better? The HMS Queen Elizabeth or the new Ford class aircraft carrier? Now, how do you define better? Aircraft carried? Sortie rate? Enemy detection capability? Speed? Range? Cost? Or a good balance of all of them? An issue is that a lot of the standard specifications can be improved by supplementing them and therefore changing their characteristics. For example, an aircraft's range if lacking can be improved by using an in-flight refuel. Other specifications can be improved by using a different if more expensive platform such as using Ospreys instead of helicopters. However, some differences can't be changed without a significant redesign of the ship. But without further ado, let's dig in. Speed. The maximum speed of the HMS Queen Elizabeth has reached was 32 knots in its sea trials, whilst the USS Ford is able to reach 35 knots. This gives Gerald Ford a certain advantage. However, transit speed is almost always limited by the escorts, and this is much commonly 20 knots or less. In this situation, both have plenty of capability. Island. Or in the Queen Elizabeth case, islands. Whilst the main reason for the separate islands on the Queen Elizabeth was the exhaust for the engines, it has several important side effects of which one of the most crucial is redundancy. Whilst the forward island holds the bridge and the rear one holds the flyco, they can each take over from the other in the event of one being put out of action. On the other hand, the Ford only has a single island and would have to control of the ship from a compromised below deck position in the event of the island being put out of action. The twin island on the QE allowed greater space to be dedicated to the bridge and flyco than if they were all in one island like the Ford. Also, the two radars are spaced far enough apart to have negligible effect on the other signal giving greater accuracy and a full 360 degrees field of view for both radars. The issues with these setup includes a slight reduction in deck space which the Queen Elizabeth is not lacking in this regard. Flyco. The Ford's Flyco seems to be split between four floors, each with smallish windows. It is also situated towards the rear of the ship. The Queen's Flyco on the other hand has three meters glass windows giving a great view out from a central location and ensuring that the controllers have the best view. On previous ships the crew had to go close to the window to see the jets above, but with this setup it's not a problem. There are two floors in a single room allowing good communication between flight controllers. The Flyco is positioned in the center of the ship, an ideal position for monitoring the entire flight deck. Also, the bridge is placed close to the front of the ship, giving a better view of the bow of the ship compared to the Ford. But before we continue, I would like to introduce you to the sponsor of this video. Private Internet Access If you browse the internet with an unprotected device, your data, your passwords and even your photos can be stolen. A virtual private network hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection. Using internet without private internet access is like boxing without protective gear. All it takes is one well-placed hit to break your jaw. And here is why I use and recommend PIA. With over 30 million downloads, PIA is the world's most transparent VPN provider and never stores data. With one subscription, you can protect an unlimited number of devices at the same time. Private Internet Access helps encrypt your connection and block hackers trying to access your personal information when accessing your favorite financial apps. And did you know that PIA gives you access to region-restricted content from all over the world? Stop paying for director's cut when only watching the trailer. When streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus and more, your library option will not depend on your physical location. PIA gives you the option to change your IP address to one of 84 countries to choose from, including all 50 U.S. states, allowing you to access websites and services that are only available in those locations. If you're in the market for the best VPN, sign up for private internet access today. By clicking my link below, you will get an 83% discount. That's just $2.03 a month. And you will also get four extra months completely free. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and sign up for private internet access. Radars The Ford supports the dual band radar which is two radars, one working in the S band and the other in the X band, and it has a range of 200 miles. The QE class also carries two radars, although they are separated between the two islands and work in L and S bands, 
the lower wavelengths allow greater range and a better ability to detect stealth aircraft. They are also carried higher than the Ford giving a greater horizon distance of approximately 250 miles. Aircraft Recovery and Resiliency In the Ford there is a single area for landing, and if this get damaged badly enough, any jet in flight can't land. On the Queen Elizabeth, however, the jets can land vertically, allowing the recovery of the jets no matter what happens, they can even land backwards. Defensive Weapons The Ford class has three levels of defense against missiles. Three Phalanx, two Ram launchers, and two Eight Tubes Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles launchers. The Queen class currently only has two Phalanx system on board. Increasing the capabilities shouldn't be hard as there are plenty of potential positions for Phalanx or Ram launchers. A batch the VLS for Sea Scepters would provide good and longer range defense too. It's estimated that this would add 200 million pounds to the Queen Elizabeth class total cost. Weapons Handling the Queen Elizabeth class carriers have pioneered the use of the highly mechanized weapon handling system, which uses 26 moles to quickly and efficiently store and distribute weapons to where they are needed. Armaments are stored on large pallets which can be efficiently moved between the magazines and the hangar weapons preparation area and flight deck. The Ford's class lacks this feature. Instead, the only mechanized part of the handling are the weapons elevator systems installed between the handling and assembly areas and the flight deck. Aircraft Variety It is much easier designing aircraft for Catabar rather than short takeoff and vertical landing, so there is a greater variety to choose from Ford class. The Ford class is capable of carrying 75-plus aircraft. It includes the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, F-18 Super Hornet, the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, the EA-18 Growler Electronic Attack Aircraft, the MH-60 RS Helicopters, as well unmanned combat vehicles. With the capacity to accommodate 65-plus aircraft, the HMS Queen Elizabeth class includes Lockheed Martin F-35B Joint Strike Fighter, the H-101 Merlin, and the Wildcat Helicopters. It also includes Chinooks and the Attack Helicopter Augusta Westland Apache. Some other maritime surveillance aircraft may be included. Flight Deck and Hangar Area Changes to the flight deck are the most visible of the differences between the Gerald R. Ford and the previous Nimitz class. Several sections have been altered from the layout of the Nimitz class flight deck, substantially improving the aircraft deck and hangar capacity. The number of aircraft lifts from hangar deck to flight deck level was reduced from the earlier ships from 4 to 3. This design changes to the flight deck are instrumental in the maximization of sorties launched. On the other hand, the Queen Elizabeth flight deck is 4 acres and the hangar is 5,000 square meters. This means that the Ford class has the advantage over the Queen Elizabeth. Sortie rates In military aviation, a sortie is a combat mission of an individual aircraft starting when the aircraft takes off. For example, one mission involving six aircraft would tally six sorties. The sortie rate is the number of the sorties that a given unit can support in a given time. The U.S. Navy designed the Ford class to increase the sortie generation capability of embarked aircraft to 160 sorties per day 12-hour fly day, and a surge to 270 sorties per day 24-hour fly day. The Queen Elizabeth class would be able to launch 110 sorties over one day and 420 sorties over a five days period. Looking into the figures, it seems that it assumes three sorties per plane on the first day, then two sorties per plane per day thereafter, which sounds about right for a continuous sortie rate. Something to bear in mind is that the sortie duration was only 1.1 hours for the F-35B, compared to 1.8 hour for the F-35C, due to the long range. Therefore, we call it a win for the Ford class. Installed Power and Propulsion The A-1B reactor uses modernized technology that is both more advanced and adaptable than previous reactor technology. It's estimated that the total thermal power output of the A-1B will be around 700 megawatts, some 25% more than provided by the A-4W, and the Ford class will have two reactors. The Queen Elizabeth power generation is large too. The propulsion system consists of two Rolls-Royce 36 megawatts MT-30 gas turbine alternators, providing over 70 megawatts. 
and four diesel engines, providing approximately 40 megawatts, with a total installed power approaching 110 megawatts. Crew Capacity The Queen Elizabeth Carrier has a total ship's crew of around 679, increasing to 1,600 with her element. There are 1,600 bunks and 470 cabins, including accommodation for a company of 250 Royal Marines. The Gerald Ford can hold 4,539 sailors, including ship crew, air wing and staff, and a Marines company. Here are some of the Ford's class advantages. Higher speed. Unlimited range. Higher internal aviation fuel capacity. Greater organic range for the aircraft. Greater ease of development for future aircraft and greater variety including drones. Slightly better fighter maneuverability. Ability to deliver bombs stealthily. Potential for stealthy refueling drones. Greater power generating capability. Higher sortie rate. Better defensive weapon system against incoming threats. And now, here's some of the Queen Elizabeth class advantages. Separate islands giving dedicated facilities for the bridge and flyco redundancies and spacing for the radars. Better radars. Better aircraft recovery ability when damaged and in bad weather. Lower crew requirements. Greater jet fuel capacity. These are not the only differences and advantages between these two powerful ships. So, in your opinion, which of these two aircraft carriers is the best? Let's make this video interactive. Please share with us more advantages between these powerful ships on the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.